thank you very much uh, for inviting me to talk today. It's with great pleasure that I present our GI Pedagogy Innovative Pedagogies for Teaching with GIS. I'm Sophie Wilson and I'm the Senior Lecturer of Secondary Geography and Course Lead for the PhD course at St Mary's University. And I've been working together with European partners, as you can see along the bottom here, to develop pedagogies to try and help teachers to teach more routinely in the classroom using Electronic Maps GIS. So the aim of the session is to share with you some of the resources developed as part of this project, which include an innovative approaches to teaching with GIS, a toolkit designed for teachers to help them to develop the skills and use GIS to teach geography more effective way, and to provide them with the confidence to embed it routinely in their everyday classroom. So this has been done by presenting a framework used for the toolkit and a couple of case study examples using Digi Maps. So this has been brought together by drawing on evidence from educational research, as well as practical examples of teachers' best practice. This has been done by developing this toolkit based on Rosenshine's 10 principles of instruction and focusing on the pedagogical knowledge in what is more commonly known as the TPAC model. So if you have a look here, you'll see there's the content no uh, knowledge and the pedagogical knowledge. So we're basing our um, resources on looking at how you develop your practice in teaching with GIS to create better locational knowledge in your classroom. So what we did, we had a think about it and we came up with the GI pedagogy concept Q. And we realized, and through all our work, that S stood for a lot of things. S stands for the system, the steps, the scaffolding, the schema, the solution to GIS problems, stories, sustainability. And between the steps, you'll see, we've got these little triangles and these represent the opportunities for checking understanding before moving up, and also the opportunity to slide step and go back. The steps may also be missed out by groups who have a better knowledge and have acquired schema beforehand. So as you can see, we've got the little scaffolding and it links to what we developed as the GI pedagogy concept cube. So based on Rosenshine's principal instruction, as you can see here on the left, we developed a template. So if you have a look at the steps, we looked at a series of steps which you would go through and at each point, as you see the little triangle, you would check. So we think that it's important that you should first of all start with some instruction, teacher facilitated stage, and this is where schema building begins and you present new material. After this, you move on to the modeling or scaffolding where you review and question what data is needed. You then look at the individual exploration and then a review stage followed by problem solving and potentially presentation and assessment of this learning. So the idea is we focus on the geography rather than the technical skills of using Digimaps. So here is um, Digimaps for school as you're all probably very familiar with. And we use this as the base for developing some resources and thinking of what we've just said in mind. So this case study is about locational knowledge and the idea is it aimed at students who are aged about 11 to 16 with the focus on the teacher's development and the everyday use of GIS. For each case study or vignette as we called them, we have looked at a template which we developed and is available on our website for how we might go about this but also bearing in mind not only the geography that's due to be learned, but also what sustainable development goals might be applicable to this. Working together with European partners, this is very key in their lesson planning. So in this template, which we developed, we outline the main um, aim of the lesson is to basically develop no uh, location and place knowledge. And above all, it's not just one lesson, but the idea is that we sequence the lessons and we keep revisiting this over a number or a period of time. OK, so let's have a look at the steps. So there's a series of steps in which we've used those different um, key themes for developing the knowledge. And what is very important is before you start the teaching, you think about our concept queue. As you can see, the blue is the working memory, the current learning from this activity. 
The green is the long-term memory prior learning that we need to build on. And the future learning is in red. So for each sequence of lessons, we have identified the geography learning stroke using of GIS to develop locational knowledge that we need in those three different sections. Looking at the cube, we then put the current learning we want from this and then develop this, the green, which is the long-term memory prior and the red, the long-term memory in the future. So using this template, we would advocate that this is how you approach planning your lessons. So for some case study examples using Digimaps, what we've done is we've worked together and we've come up with some Digimap um, examples. Hopefully, if I click on here, we'll get through to my subscription. If not, don't worry, here's one I've done before. So here is my Digimaps. And what we've got here is, as you know, you can save your maps. So what we've done is we've saved a series of maps that go with that template I've just um, suggested with you. So if we start with our first map, what I would suggest is in the first step, if I showed you in the model, you start with your school. In our case, we started with our university because I teach PGC trainees. So first of all, we're showing the area and this gives a nice aerial view. And Digimaps is so clear and so easy to use. So if I go across here, we can immediately have a look and see what is the area like on an ordnance survey map. So moving forward again, we might want to say, well, which scale is this map? It's one to 25,000. So investigating a little bit further, what was it like in the 1950s? So again, we've got this slider and we can look at what it was like in the 1950s. How has it changed? And we slide across seamlessly to see what it was like in the 1890s. To me, this slider is excellent because it makes using GIS and layered maps so easy. So if we just slide along again, we can then compare it to today. And as you can see, there's a lot of houses in this little place compared with what there was either in the 1890s or even if we slide across, we can very quickly see that there was even less houses still in the 1950s. So the aim of this then is to make this a sort of um, something we would use in every lesson that we start looking at a new place. So in order to sequence our lessons, we then had a second case study. So in my safe maps, if we look down, Swanage, and this is the place where we go on our field trip. So what we did was we had a look at Swanage and we thought the best way here was to introduce the area. This is where we stay and there's a little um, um, marker here. And we have a look at Swanage Bay and the growth. So if we do what we just did just now, it's very interesting. We can have a little look at what it, the aerial view looks like. So we can see very clearly that it's coastal and that you've got a lot of um, greenery around. But if we then have a look, what was it like in the 1950s? And if we overlay this, we can see actually they were quite similar built up area. So we can do this so easily and seamlessly. And then we say, well, what was it like in the 1890s? And again, seamlessly, you can see there was quite a lot of growth between the 1890s and the 1950s. And if we look that back to the geography, it probably links back to the railway. So if we have a look again, we then go for a day in Lulworth Cove. So the idea here is seamlessly, we can just log into that and hopefully this helps the students to have a sense of place about where we're going and where the different places are located. So if we have a look up here, you'll see if we then zoom into the 1950s, that settlement was still there. And then if we have a look again at today, it's quite interesting because this pattern is very similar, but is slightly developed again. So this is our field work. So again, what we're trying to do is introduce a routine. So students routinely see us as teachers using these sliders. So the next save map we've got links in with the syllabus again and the curriculum, and we look at Birmingham. This case time, we have a little unit on urbanization. So if we look at the 1890s, it's very clear that Birmingham was significantly smaller than it is now. So if we slide across and see what it looked like today, 
you'll see the same area is exceedingly built up. Now, what we need to do is on those other maps, I saved um, a little marker. So if we do the markers now, and there is your marker and it can come up from then on. So if we want to look what it looked like in the 1950s, I think it's really interesting because in between you can see that growth and then go back to the 1890s where you can see Birmingham was a much, much smaller city and it really shows how it grew over that time. Moving on, I would like now to share with you our next um, case study that we use as part of this um, scheme of work. We compared Birmingham to Mumbai, another part of the world, and sometimes people don't always appreciate the distances you're traveling when you do this stuff. So anyway, looking at this now, you can see Mumbai, and what we then do as part of this start of the lesson is we actually zoom out, and you see there a much bigger context for where Mumbai is. And the idea here is, again, if you have a look we look at the layers that are available, you'll see that there are some human layers. And if we zoom out a little bit further, you actually have the option to name the places. Now, this is very handy when you're looking at local places because you can actually see the key areas. And as you zoom out further and further, you'll see that you can then have a look at where it is and that it's in India. And then Mumbai even further, if you look on the global scale, you can then actually compare it back to where we've come from very simply with the click of a mouse. So our three case studies that we've already looked at, you'll see at Birmingham, where we come from, St Mary's, and also our field trip. So there is already a sense of place being um, developed. Now, I think this is a really lovely thing to use because actually we can start looking at population. Again, the transparency can be altered. And as you do this, you can have a look at what the population density is, but also compare it locally or to where we come from ourselves. So if we zoom it in, it's rather interesting, I think. We could also link that if we want to some physical geography very easily. So if we have a look here and we look at the physical geography, I rather like the mountain ranges. because I think it really gives it a sense of place and why maybe there's more people. There's a lot of people in the Himalayas, but also, but just south of them, and you can see that Mumbai has actually um, got mountains quite near the Western Ghats. So what we're doing now is we keep adding a little bit of sophistication to what we're doing. And the other option here is when you're looking at global scale is to actually look and see the um, Atlas version. So if I then click back and I have a look at the human geography, so I've gone to the physical geography here, I've taken off the population and instead I'm now looking at the, um, the biomes. And by looking at the biomes, I can also zoom them on and off. And instead of I'm looking at the Atlas version, or I can look at the world boundaries version. I have that choice. So if I have a look at the world biomes, I can put them on again, and I can actually link them to my case studies, but also to the mountains and to the different parts of the world. And it's very easy to see that England and where we are at the moment is very different from the Indian one. So I'm hoping over the time and over the different lessons that we're doing, that means that we are developing our students' sense of place, but in a really easy way to do. So my next case study that we look at as part of this sequence of lessons is going to be the um, Reykjavik. This is a unit of work that looks at volcanoes and plate tectonics. So again, I've made sure that the layers I've selected from this global view relate to that. We've actually got the biomes if we want to, and we can make them either more or less prominent. But I think it's really interesting to be able to mix and match this sort of local geography. I can switch that off if I want, or I can keep it on. So by doing this, we're looking at the mountain ranges. So again, this is very interesting because obviously that area there is exactly the place where the mountain ranges are. But to add to this, as we know, it's a little place mark for Reykjavik that we put on earlier. You can see the plate margins. And in addition, we've added this time the latitude and longitude to give it a sense of place. Now, if we then zoom out a little bit, we again get the opportunity to link to our other case studies. And again, we get an opportunity to see where other 
volcanoes are across the world. And so get that sense of place again in relation to the plate boundaries and the plates themselves. So if I now look at our next case study, this is our final one for this sequence of lessons. We are looking at Alice. So what we did here was we made sure that we looked and could see Iceland and we can see where our Addis is and that the one thing they've got in common is the volcanoes and the plate margins. This time we've only left on the markers that show the main lines of latitude. But I think this is really useful. And if we go back to our layers again, depending on what you want to show, we can actually take off the plate boundaries or we can take off the actual tectonic plates, which is quite useful. So in this case, we're looking at the um, world boundaries um, version. But if we want to look at the atlas version, we can link it to the atlas. And this sequence of lesson is more about comparing and looking at different parts of Africa. So if we then want to turn on the world biomes, we can compare it with Lagos. And Lagos has no volcanoes. But if we zoom in, we'll see that it's very distinctive in that it's near the sea and that it has different biomes than we've got over in Adidas, where in Ethiopia here, we've got a whole series of mountains. So if I zoom out, we can then see them both on the um, same map. Now, what we're trying to do with this is try and get a routine where we are able to zoom in and out and get this to be everyday geography, that the sense of place and location is part of our everyday teaching, where we use this so frequently that we are actually very seamless with it. And hopefully students will then be able to take it on. Now, in the final step, I want to share with you um, the final um, part of this, where the Ordnance Survey have um, developed for us. So if we have a look here, um, the fourth example is the top stage. So if you see here, sorry, it says present your results. So what you'll find is that there are a whole series of Ordnance Survey demonstrators. And the one I particularly like with link to the stuff we've done actually in the Netherlands and in Belgium was the wind farms. So what I would get my students to do in this final problem solving and uh, presentation area is to use this Ordnance Survey demonstrator to get them to click on the various layers that are already prepared for you and have different um, things here that you need to talk, look at and you can decide and they can work together to decide where they think the best place is for a new wind farm. There's also one for housing and there's also one for retail as well as insurance location. I believe by using these steps in this way, if a teacher uses this Digimaps as routinely to develop a sense of place in their lesson and then leads to this kind of case study, this then allows students to develop a much better sense of place moving forward. That is just an outline. What we've done is we've developed an online course for teachers, which is currently in its final stages of being finalised. So if you're interested, then please do have a look at our website where the label is down there. And we do actually have a multiplier event at St Mary's University next Thursday, if you're interested, and you could sign up um, on Ev Eventbrite if you're interested to investigate this further. So. If you are not a part of Digimaps of the schools already, there is a free subscription. You can have a go yourself for 30 days. So why not have a try? And please do visit our website. Follow us on Twitter. Thank you very much.